Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can take tagged animations inside of Asaprite and have them exported individually to their own sprite sheets rather than having everything combined in one single sprite sheet. So this is really helpful if you're working in game engines like Godot, and I'll show you why later on. So in order to do this, we're going to need a custom script added into Asaprite. So we can find the one I'm talking about here at github.com slash asprite slash asprite sprite examples i'll put the link in the description of course so this is basically a pack of scripts including export tags to different sprite sheets which is the script we're going to use so when you come to this site go ahead and click code and then you can choose download as zip so with the zip file opened up you'll see a bunch of these dot lua scripts those are what you use to run specific functions inside of asprite so inside of asprite go to file scripts and then open scripts folder and then this is going to be where we put any scripts that we want to be able to use the function included in Asprite. So to get the files into here, just extract them from the zip file. The only one you need for this video is export tags to different sprite sheets, but feel free to grab the other ones as well. And then once you have them inside of this folder, we can go to file scripts and then rescan scripts folder. And when you go to file scripts again, the ones you just added should show up here. So if you didn't already know, you can create animations with tags inside of Asprite, and when you hit enter to let them play, they'll automatically loop through the tagged frame. So it's a really handy way of taking a giant list of frames and making sure that each one is set to their own animation. So just to quickly show, if I hit Alt-B here to create a new empty frame, and then I'll click on the tag here, and set the max frame here back to 39 where it was belonging. Then I can take this frame and any other ones I create in the future. I'll just hit Alt B, select all of these, and then I can right click and do new tag. And then this could be called empty for an empty animation. So when you actually fill the layers in with your animation, these will all play as one combined animation in a loop format, like you can see right there. So when you have one or more of your animations created, all we need to do now is go up to file scripts export tags to different sprite sheets. So you'll probably see a warning that will say that scripts can crash Asprite. So please save your work before running a script. I'm gonna just check don't show this alert again, cause I know that. And then on the next little screen, you'll see how each of these animations are being put to their own file. So you can see the name of the Asprite file, the character gatherer, and then dash the name of the animation. Uh, so this is handy that they will always output like this because if you change an animation and then you rerun the script, it'll just automatically update the old animations. So it could be a good workflow. Uh, let's go ahead and hit yes here. So it does give you the warning. Do you want to override the initial files? So I can hit yes to that for all of these, or I could just do don't show this alert again, which I'll go ahead and check that. So after all of that's done, the PNG and JSON files for those animations uh, should be in the same folder where you had the Asaprite file. So now each of these are going to be their own sprite sheets. So one sprite sheet per animation. Of course, already in Asaprite, you already had the ability to export everything into one giant sprite sheet. Uh, but let me show you in Godot why you might not want to do that. So if I take my sprite 2D and then I apply a animation to the texture here, like let's say my walk right animation. So I'll just drag that in there. And then you have the, by default, it will look like this, applying the entire sprite sheet as your character object. But if you open up animation, you can take the H frames and V frames and slice this into individual frames. So I can just count that this animation has seven frames. And all I need to do is put seven for H frames and hit enter. So now each frame is part of the animation and i can just kind of scroll through this if i want to it goes pretty fast though so now it's really easy to take this and to use it in the animation player for creating animations so if i click here animation new animation i'll just call this walk right and all i need to do to finish the animation is add track property track sprite 2d and we're gonna set the texture here. So to make sure that it's always updated in the walk right animation with this walk right sprite sheet, I'm gonna right click, insert key, click here, and make sure that the value is set to this. If it's not, you can just drag and drop it right into here to set that as a keyframe. So when the animation starts, it's gonna make sure it's using this sprite sheet. Then I do add track, property track, uh, sprite 2D, and we'll do frame. So double click on that. 
And now it's going to be as simple as it could be to finish the animation. Just click on Sprite 2D. Uh, you'll see that with the animation window open that there's a keyframe option for each of these properties. So the one we need is frame. So frame zero is obviously going to go here at the start of our animation. So I'm just going to click add keyframe. And what you'll notice is that it'll automatically increment the frame to one. So if I want to make frame one go in the next keyframe spot, which snaps in the increment down here, uh, then all I need to do is click on the add keyframe button, and then it will automatically jump to frame two. And I can just click this a whole bunch of times until the animation uh, is completely done in loops. So right here, you can see we got to the seventh frame. So there's nothing else for us to keep clicking. If we keep clicking, then uh, it'll just give us this line as the frame doesn't actually change here. So I'm going to delete those extra frames. All I need to do is take the timing here and cap it out at the 0.7 seconds for seven frames. And the snapping down here, you want to set that to your frame rate. So if you're doing 10 frames per second, make it 0.1 seconds. Check the looping thing. Click over here to turn looping on, and then you can just hit play to see your animation loop over and over again. If it's not fast enough, then just change your snapping and then re-add the frames again, and it will snap to whatever increment you want, if, whether that's 0.2 seconds for five frames a second or 0.05 seconds for 20 frames per second. And that's all we need to do. We do this once for each animation. And then whenever we export from Asaprite, it will just update the sprite sheet, which is going to update in here because we're referencing frames in the sprite sheet, not individual textures for every single frame. So it's just a really handy way of doing things, I think. From this point, I can just create the other animations. I'm gonna click animation new, and then let's do walk up, let's say high to low. So add a track property, sprite 2D texture. We go here to frame zero, insert key, click here, drag the PNG to be here, add track property, sprite 2D frame. And then we go to frame zero and we do the insert key here. So you'll see one issue happens, which is that the number of frames in this texture differs from the other ones. So we are going to need to keyframe the H frame as well. So we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and we need a sixth one. I'm gonna set the time to 0 0.6 looping. Let's go to frame zero here and add one more property, add track, property track, sprite 2D, H frames, and then this is going to need to be keyframed at six. So I'm going to put six there, keyframe it. And now the frames are going to be correctly sliced. So if I hit play, we have another animation working. So let's just go back to walk right. And as you can see, we need to set the H frames. So I'm going to do add property, sprite 2D H frames. I'll insert a key here and I remember this value should be seven. So I'm going to change that in the inspector to seven. And now that animation is working and this animation is working. So you can see that once you get the hang of this, it's going to be really easy to add in new animations and you won't need to worry about a gigantic sprite sheet changing on you for any reason. To kind of show you what I mean, this is a really cool character, but the sprite sheet could potentially be a mess for you. So if you changed one frame out of place, and then you separated the sprite sheet based on rows and columns, then that could mess up everything in your project because you're relying on each individual frame to stay in exactly the same space as you work on it. So I think that is why if you separate everything into their own individual files with seven, eight, 12 frames of animation, um, then the only thing you would be changing or potentially messing up would be that one animation. And it would be really easy to identify the problems because everything is separated into their own individual sprite sheets for their own animations. So that's just why I think this is a pretty handy tool, export tags to different sprite sheets uh, that you could use for your own project. So that's how you can export your individual animations into their own separate sprite sheets inside of Asprite. I hope this video was pretty easy to follow. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.